Uh, we can, uh, yeah, go ahead and I'll just, maybe one thing is just to have one, uh, I, because I did actually have one question for, um, for this session. Um, it's, uh, so Daniel, do, do you know if any of the, um, uh, when, when you, use that print f in the in your example do you know if the cocos there is a i don't know if you um mentioned it earlier but there's a cocos print f does that have to be mm -hmm. used when you're running you're invoking that print f like if you want to have some sort of print of some data on the gpu like on on a device um, uh, yeah you need to use cocos print f on the gpu but yeah. this is not on the GPU. This is on the CPU where you're printing, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Yep. But you can also use Cocos Print if it just does the same thing as mm -hmm. Print. Yeah. Yeah. Here it would be. Okay. All right. That was the. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we can. Yeah. Go to your question. Um. Yeah. I was wondering, in terms of like applications you've worked on, um, if. So if I'm submitting a bunch of CUDAs, or I guess a, a bunch of um, different kernels to the device, and then some of them might need to do like ghost zone copies, and then I might want to spawn additional ones after those ghost zone copies, or, or basically if I submit kernels to a device in some specific order are they guaranteed to be executed on that device in that order if i only have one stream and like these kinds of components yes okay okay um and then in terms of like let's say i submit these and then every once in a while i have something that needs to go internode uh is there a way to like add a callback into the cocos kernels so that the device when the device has completed something like a copying to a specific buffer that then I know that I can start the MPI send on a CPU thread uh, or what is the recommended way of doing this interoperability is maybe the more general question. Maybe my, my idea of thinking about it might be completely wrong. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, it depends a little bit, um, on like your use case but i mean you could i mean if you want to be be fancy you can of course uh just create events um like cuda events um mm -hmm. in general when you're cuda but we have like a capability um we're working on a capability but to basically see if uh execution space is busy right now um so you can just just query it um mm -hmm. there is no way to attach a callback at this point in time so i mean what you just do is whenever you need to do you just fence the kernel and then manually launch whatever you need to do okay so support for graphs for example but i'm not quite sure if that would help um here much yeah because i saw that at least i think kuda and hip at some point added support for callbacks on the host but i have not i have zero experience with this so that's why i was kind of just just asking um Right, if yeah, they... we don't support that. I mean, it's not okay. anything that users ask for. Like the closest yeah. that people wanted is basically just get some kind of event out as a particular kernel done or is even just the execution space instant done with the current work. That's that's what people were asking for. Ah, okay, so basically what I can do right now with Cocos is say, oh, this kernel that I submitted a while back, is it complete? And if so, do something else. Uh, yeah, going. you can't do that yet. That's something that we are working on. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. But I mean, if but there it... is demand, then we, that has higher priority for us to to do. For sure. Okay. Yeah. So 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 we're sort of at the stage where I'll probably start trying to get Coco support into the code in about a month. Um, there's some other things we have to sort of do before that that'll be sort of required anyway in terms of interoperability. Um, yeah, but basically the way our code is set up is it's uh, it uses sort of this message-driven or task-based parallelism approach. And so like what, what I had sort of in mind was that, oh, I would submit all of these 
kernels to the GPU. And then when one of the kernels that then, and then when I submit a kernel that is going to be responsible for sharing ghost zone or halo data to another node, um, then I, I would insert a callback that would then launch a, insert a task to the, on the host tasking system to initiate an MPI transfer, basically, is sort of the what I had envisioned here. Right, right. Um, so, uh, so, uh, I, and I think it looks like with Cocos, I can get access to the CUDA stream directly. So this is something like I could try out, I guess, in sort of a unofficial way. And if it works, then be like, oh, this seems to be working well. Is there a way to get official support or something? I guess, right? Right. I mean, it's. I mean, you can always. Uh use CUDA stuff. I mean, it's just like officially, you can officially just uh, use uh, any kind of CUDA devices. Like there is, uh, there's uh, the interoperability is there on purpose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, you know, I don't also want to request something. And then it turns out afterwards that my implementation idea wouldn't work anyway. And then you guys wasted a bunch of your valuable time yeah. adding a feature that I didn't turns out didn't work for other reasons, right? So that's sort of why I ask like, oh, if I can do a hack example and then be like, oh, look, this actually works well, then there's like real motivation and maybe yeah. to do it kind of thing. No, so, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, the reality is that this is really not how people use Cocos much. Like they don't use a fancy tasking system. Most of them are really happy just having one execution space instance, not even streams many. Uh, streams, uh, yeah, yeah. And stuff, um, but yeah. you can do that. I mean, you can build like your task graph and whatever yourself using streams, for example. And mm -hmm. we support um, like part of the uh, the CUDA graphs interface. Okay, um, oh, but cool. not host tasks. <laughs> no, not host tasks in particular. So yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, this this looked like is a fairly easy thing in the CUDA and HIP APIs, especially because it seems like, you know, it's somewhat limited in what you can call in terms of functions, which is just perfect for us. Like for us, it's basically, so, so it's a, it's a finite element code. And so it's literally just like, oh yeah, the element with this integer index, call it next kind of thing, right? Or like tell it to do this thing. So it's a, a fairly simple um, thing there. Um, and then right. I, I was going to, going to ask sort of related to this uh in terms of experience for a finite element codes like um in terms of number of grid points per element or structuring like clustering elements together so if i had like if my elements are 10 cubed that's only a thousand grid points um that might not really be enough to keep a, a gpu busy is there experience between sort of the trade-off of segmenting the GPU into multiple s streams versus, um, and, and my understanding is G streams share the RAM. So I it's like a threading type approach. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's just share the GPU, right? Okay, yeah. So um, I mean, then your launch depends on does this kernel fit on the GPU? Right. And so it might be synchronous or asynchronous. Right. You can, of course, then physically divide your like a CUDA GPU into into like depending on what kind of thing you have, like in up to like seven or so um, right. instances, which will then each have their own resources and guard it off kind of. And then you're guaranteed oh, okay. that that would work. But then you have like the problem that <laughs> that you cannot you run to... big tasks on any right. of them, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like my my sort of like the design space thing that I was thinking is like sort of the thing of like, if I have two threads that share the memory space, um, which would each be sort of like then a stream, and then I can submit smaller work units to each of them. And then if I have a bigger work unit, then I might have to queue that separately or something like this. But in general, sort of trying to get some yeah, it's sort of the, the trade-off between how many elements you batch together versus how many grid points you have per element, since that also changes the stability and order of the numerical scheme. And so there's like 
a non-trivial interplay with this, right? So yeah, I mean, in general, it's good as if you can submit as much work as possible to like one particular execution space uh, resource, right? Okay. I mean, if you if you want to uh, split that between multiple execution space instances or streams, then you always have to pay the price of the launch overhead. So it's still like mm. not running as good as you want it. I mean, basically. Uh, running on any kind of GPU is always like trying to avoid the launch latency because that impacts okay. you like a lot until uh, you like okay. hit like I mean like a hundred thousand uh, elements or so. Then you like then I mean this is like kind of like where you start to see peak performance. I see. Okay. Uh, by elements, do you mean like uh, grid points or colocation points or or elements um, as it? in uh, like well just like say um doubles loaded from memory or ah, like okay, flops okay. or like like yeah, yeah, yeah. operations okay. basically operations like one operation on like a hundred thousand points or something like that yeah okay 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 so that that's that helps okay yeah, yeah i yeah, mean yeah. if you just have like a, a huge arithmetic intensity if you do like a lot of compute on a low amount of points that's of course much better since like loading memory is always the i mean almost always the bottleneck yeah yeah and sort of in in this vein i know this has changed a lot over the last couple generations of gpus um in terms of if i have a few temporaries. So like if I'm, I'm solving a PDE system where I have a few temporaries where I need to do some dot products and this kind of thing, I, I by few, I mean 250 of them. Um, is this, I, I, my understanding is this used to be on like the P100s or V100s, you'd run into that, you'd reach the size of the registers or, or something like this and your performance would tank. And so you had to like really yeah. worry about kernel sizes and stuff like this. Is, has this been become a lot better on sort of the A100s and more recent GPUs like the, what is it, the, what's on Frontier, MI250X or something like this? Yeah, yeah it's a problem on MI250X in particular. Like you ah, have okay. like few registers, the L1 cache is, is small. So that's why you oftentimes, uh, I mean, Kevin was mentioning that, um, right. that you need to uh, to lower your occupancy oftentimes just uh, so that you avoid spilling registers. But like on okay. other GPUs, like on Intel GPUs, well, on Intel GPUs also have like low registers, but like a higher L1 cache, uh, NVIDIA right. GPUs uh, are, but NVIDIA GPUs are pretty good with that. But yeah, I mean, ultimately registers are, are handled uh, by, by the particular runtime and it would just like spill into L1 cache uh, on its own. So sometimes you have to do that yourself or like use a team policy to manage the, the shared mm -hmm. uh, space. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and particularly if you know that you have problems with, with spilling. Okay. Yeah, there I were, there were a bunch of techniques to to yeah. I mean, to to lower the occupancy basically and get better performance. And Kevin was talking uh, like one of the, we have the, like this Arborex example where we uh -huh. uh, would just uh, do occupancy tuning basically for range policy. Um and then see right. that with lower occupancy we get like better results because we have like more registers available. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I worry about this a little bit. Um, since our application has roughly 350 doubles per grid point that you need in order to sort of compute the time derivative. And mm -hmm. th this this pushes you, I think I did the math, and ideally we have something like three kilobytes L1 cache per floating point unit, something mm -hmm. like this. And I think the A100s, I mean, this is like... I find very difficult information to extract from the vendors for GPUs compared to CPUs where like CPUs, you just look it up and they're like, this is what it is. Um, but my understanding is for the A100s, this is true. I don't know if you have any insight into the MI250X's L1 cache size per F floating point unit or per SM or warp or whatever they call it again. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that was, I had a slide on that. Oh, for, uh, sorry. I think we're over time right now. Raul? Oh, yeah, we're right on. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, sorry. For, I'll, yeah. I yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, so uh, this is great. Uh, I think uh, we can close this.
uh, uh, is anyone using the reservation is one question I wanted uh, to check. Um, and Raul has asked that too. Yeah. I, am I in the main room or in the um, no, waiting room one? No, yeah, that was the question because if, if there is nobody using the reservation, then we would like to close the reservation. Um, okay. Uh, there, yeah, there were more people here earlier. Uh, I, I mean, I guess it's Friday. I, I, I don't know, but, but maybe it would be really nice if this is just my, my request is if maybe you could extend it a little bit to, or like open it up on Monday for the, you know, anyone that couldn't finish. Um, because they had to leave, but that's okay. just you know, talking really. about no reservation, or are you talking about chaining accounts? Uh, the reservation that you put up here. Oh, the reservation only if it's for during the training, because you sometimes I... you don't want to wait. But after the training, I mean, you wait a little bit is fine. But actually, okay. uh, the queue, uh, interactive queue, is really quick. There's no need okay. to okay. do a reservation. The yeah. Accounts that it's through May second for training accounts. Oh, it should be good. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, well, at least so. okay. It just if I, I don't know who was asking about the L1 cache size uh, for MI250X. I think it's 16 kilobytes. Yeah, it might have been. Uh, is that per per what? <laughs> per thread block, like whatever is equal to thread. compute unit. I don't know what is equal. Uh, okay. To how many yeah. how many floating point units are there for a thread block again on this one? Uh, I I guess double precision floating point is specific. Four, right? on NMD. I, I I don't remember how many uh, threads are there in the in the thread like whatever the thread block. Okay, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll look into it. Oh, sorry. No, yeah, I, I I remember that was an issue with with like. Lamps like a few con a few potentials in lamps because the Nvidia one has like you know much higher L1 cache, so we used to get like more than 90% L1 hit rate. The moment you mm -hmm. went in okay. X that dropped to like 60% or something. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh like I presented that uh a while ago mm -hmm. in a Procos user group meeting. Um so this is for A 100 what we effectively see. Um, okay. So we have a cache size per SM of 192 kilobytes and then um, uh, L240 megabytes, memory bandwidth 1.6 terabytes and peak floating point. Right, I think each SM. Yeah. Can I say something? Just, just to clarify that the L1 cache size that you're seeing is actually like combined cache with the shared memory, right? On on AMD, like that's like you have an L1 cache and you have a shared memory that are like two different units. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, it, sorry, go ahead. No, no. So when I said 16 kilobytes, I meant that it was just the L1 cache, not like the shared memory. So there's also a separate shared memory unit that you know it's not like 16 kilobytes versus 192 kilobytes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah, this is MI250. So you see 16 with this 192 kilobytes, really. And that's the problem that we see, basically, in MI, 250s. Uh, on okay. Okay. And then if we go to Intel GPUs again, um, then we see 128 kilobytes, which is nice. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Because if I do the math, I think there's 32 double precision floating point units per SM. Which gives you six kilobytes per floating point unit, which is nice. That's quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And then you know, one twenty eight is whatever it ends up being, but is also yeah, it would be four kilobytes, which is comparable to a CPU. So it's serving the same. Yeah, the memory bandwidth is also very nice for 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 Intel. <laughs> yeah, yeah this makes the same right. This makes me surprised that Aurora isn't performing yet quite at what they were hoping. What do you mean by that? I thought I thought they were promised a two exaflop system, and half the system delivers half an exaflop. Oh, I thought they were like almost yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they're like at doing it right now. So yeah, the problem really is energy consumption, right? Yes. 
like the Intel GPUs are are pretty bad. <laughs> oh, really? To... Yeah, I mean they consumed for like half the machine, like pretty much the same as uh, Frontier. Whoa. Yeah, and I would say actually on that, I would say that the energy consumption is also has to. Uh, it's like the entire uh, infrastructure too. Like I, I, from what I understand, Daniel, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Is that oh, well, like Oak Ridge has gone through a lot of um, uh, like they've done a lot of things, and they have some advantages in terms of the energy grid infrastructure um, that's in that locale in Tennessee. It's easier to, uh, it's cheaper. Electricity is basically cheaper in in that area. Okay. But, but yeah, I, I, this is, it's a lot of factors. Um, is what I wanted to say. I mean, Daniel's right. I just, yeah, I mean, this, the entire supercomputer to put up, there's a lot of different factors to put it. Yeah. I would say tools actually helps to identify kind of the performance. Uh, I don't, I actually don't know if we have tools measuring energy. Um, we have Variorium, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. Did, yeah, Daniel, have you used that one? Variorium connector? No, I have not. Yeah. Um, yes. So I just wanted to like, if you look at the, the, the green 500,